Guys, if there's one thing we love more than talking about reality TV, it's a good vacation. Sometimes you just need to escape the drama. Am I right? You're not wrong. <laughs> and there's no better place to escape to than Spectrum Resorts, rated a top 10 family beach resort with two amazing full-service beachfront properties. Turquoise Place and the Beach Club Resort and Spa in Gulf Shores, Alabama. There she is. <laughs> Guys, we recently got back from Turquoise Place, and let me tell you, this was next level vacationing. Shout out to that complimentary breakfast, our beautiful balcony overlooking the white sand beaches, and that gorgeous water. Plus, the on-site dining, shopping, spa services, resort-style pools, and more. Can we please go back? <laughs> I'm counting down the days, <laughs> Teresa. And if you guys want an amazing getaway, right now we can save you $200 off your next reservation by using promo code POD1. That's right. Just make sure you book directly through Spectrum Resorts and use promo code POD1 to save $200. As always, I'll have John put links in the show notes. Thank you to Spectrum Resorts for this incredible getaway and for sponsoring this podcast. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Married to Reality. I'm your co-host, John, here with my wife and co-host. When Misha said the Dead Sea tasted like an overly dirty martini, this one immediately <laughs> started searching for flights to Israel. It's the one and only extra dirty Teresa. <laughs> That's a good one. Hello, everyone. <laughs> How's everyone doing? <laughs> I always raise your intros and sometimes you ask me like, hey, what should I say? I'm like, I don't want to tell you because then I love when you come up with your intros minus the couple of fails you we went through and well, ever it, since, wasn't, it wasn't nice. Ever since you got on my case, I started getting nervous and I've asked for help. Well, you, I don't think you have helped me. I've asked you two or three times now because we get down to the wire. We're on a time crunch. We got to get this episode out. And sometimes I say, I'm busy doing, by the ways, is there any intro that popped into your head when we were watching? And you reluctantly help me maybe once but most of the time you're like no surprise me yeah because i like it minus the time that you called me a hooker but <laughs> okay i said it with love i thought that was the biggest compliment there was yeah like it almost sounded like i have std no <laughs> yes, no. yes. Oh, that was you. a that was a horrible intro emphasis on the whore okay okay yeah <laughs> no good I'm glad I. I'm glad I was able to. You have three strikes. You uh, you failed once. What do you mean? I, uh, I'm I'm counting. Next, okay. Three strikes. I'm taking over. Please. <laughs> I could use a little help around here. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I realized this episode? Mm -mm. I think I probably realized it prior to this episode, but this one really solidified it for me. This show must give average guys everywhere so much hope. What do you mean? Nicola, Gino, like how these beautiful women somehow love these less than beautiful men. This is how you end up with someone like Tyre. They watch, they watch Nicola getting just rubbed down by this beautiful woman with mud on the beach. And they go, if he can get her, I could get the real Carmela. <laughs> <laughs> That was the reason for the bad intro, by the way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Full circle. But, well, yes and no. I think these women, for example, Misha's gorgeous, right? But she found her fate. And I think that's what connects her to Nicola. That's why she finds him attractive because they have this big thing in common. And that's God, mm -hmm. right? That's true. And I have to say... We watched a lot of crazy documentaries about religion and religious leaders. I think compared to them, Nicola is a fun dude that is probably more attractive than what we watched on HBO. Maybe. With a lady with big hair. The way down or yeah. something. <laughs> yeah. So I wouldn't give him... He's not my type. <laughs> he's... He, I, I enjoy him saying anything because... It's funny how he uses the English language and not in a bad way. His English is pretty good. It's just how he words things. It's funny. Well, he starts every sentence or ends every sentence with Misha. <laughs> no, that's right. <laughs> but like, again, not my type, but he's not awful, right? So I can see her being attracted to him because of the fate. And there is something to him, I guess. 
And then Gino, I think Jasmine is so nuts that she went through a bunch of men and everyone just ran from her until she met Gino. And I think that's why, that's what she likes about him, that no matter what she does, he's there. Well, at least he was until now. <laughs> Can I say something? I hope this doesn't get me in trouble. Sure. Sure. I never, I was never that religious, but I grew up with a lot of religious folks and Ooh. just in high school, oh, middle okay, school, okay, okay. Um, outside of the temple, oh. <laughs> um, speaking about the church and a lot of beautiful women, a lot of, a lot of the more attractive people I grew up with were very into religion. Really? Yeah. And I saw throughout my life that religion was a way and not that they went into religion with this in mind, but religion somehow brought people together who otherwise would not be together. And what I mean by that is beautiful women with unattractive men. You, if you are an unattractive man and you were just head over heels for God, somehow very attractive women would, be, would become head over heels for you. Well, I think for a lot of very religious families from smaller towns, it's about the family connection too. Okay. It's, I can see that. And because you mix God into this, then it's like, well, you guys are meant to be. God I, said so. And I know mom and they're pretty wealthy. You should, you should connect. Well, I think it, maybe it's a little bit of that, but I think it's a little bit of don't be superficial. That's probably something taught in the church. Don't be superficial. Put God first. And so if you find a man of faith, even if he's not that good looking, you're going to go for him over the hot guy who's banging everyone. So I think that's probably how you end up with these matches. Interesting. The only religious person I know to this day and I'm rel related to is my grandma. Mm -hmm. None of my friends, no one's religious. Like Czech is a very atheist country. Oh, I know. One I of the most atheist Be countries in the world. Before we started dating, I looked, because I, I, I know myself pretty well and I would not fare well with an overly religious person. Oh, neither would I. So I love that you're Jewish, but I love that you are a cultural Jew. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't think I could be with you if you were religious, no matter what religion, just because I'm not, a, I'm not on the same page, Yeah. but I, I'm here for the culture and just to take it all whole circle back. That's why I love Christmas because for me, Christmas is cultural because my family isn't religious, right. but the way we celebrated it was a culture, a tradition, a family get together. For sure. It's like your Thanksgiving. For sure. And I know you gave me a little shit about why do I want to celebrate Christmas because I'm not religious, but I think when I explained it to you, now you're into it. No, I don't think I, I don't think for most people, well, I shouldn't speak for most people, but the, the most exciting part of Christmas is the tradition. It's, I don't think it's necessarily going to church. I know plenty of people who celebrate Christmas that don't go to church on Christmas. They just love the family and the cultural and the traditional aspect of it. Correct. But I think Christmas, the idea of Christmas, it is a religious holiday for 100%. a lot of people, right? 100%, yeah. And that's what I was trying to explain to you, that that's not how my family views Christmas. And you've experienced it, right? Yeah. Got it. All right. Well, All right. let's not go too far down this path. We will talk a little bit about it when we get to Nicola and Misha. But mm -hmm. until then, a little business real quick. We're on Supercast, we're on Patreon, we're covering The Other Way over there, 90 Day The Other Way. It's quite the season. It's one of my favorite seasons of 90 Day ever. They keep adding new couples and they're like, you think it's crazy now? Wait a week. Here's Shekinah. And you're like, holy shit, I was not prepared for Shekinah, <laughs> let alone Sarper, who I am very excited to meet. <laughs> Same so, here. If you want to hear our thoughts on that couple and all the couples on The Other Way, join us on Patreon or Supercast. You can find us at patreon.com slash married to reality or married to reality dot supercast dot com. Join us starting at the Cousins Club level for that. Correct. Also, make sure you follow us on Instagram at married to reality pod. You can message us there. We share memes over there. We share news and updates. It's a good time at married to reality pod on Instagram. Yes, guys, make sure you follow us there. Yes. Also, make sure you're following us wherever you're listening. It's so easy to do. All you got to do is look down and smash that follow button. Guys, you're going to love this one. Smash it, like it, 
as hot and fluffy as Cleo's cat. Meow. Did I just come around, cats? Because uh-huh. <laughs> you know what it is? Couple fluffers. I I like how groomed they are, and they're they're grumpy. Yeah. I love the whole grumpy cat look. They have everything you want in a cat. I would pick them up. Yeah, I would, I would lo- throw them in the air and, and catch them. I don't think they would like that. <laughs> you don't think so? You do not know cats well enough if you think that's a good idea. But I feel like cats, has, they have nine lives, so they're kind of like down to do whatever. <laughs> All right, <laughs> well, next time you see a fluffy cat, I'm going to step back and you can try that. <laughs> Who Do we have a, oh, we have a friend with a cat. I don't think they would be, they would be happy. No. Maybe if anyone ever asks us to catch it again, I'll do it. I don't think anyone will. If they listen to this. <laughs> we did catch it once. And never again. Why? I think you know why, Teresa. <laughs> I think you know why. They still like to show you the photo of you holding their cat for the first time and going, this is not how you hold a cat, Teresa. Well, I tried. You sure did. I tried. All right. So Smash Like is as hot as those cute, fluffy cats. And last but not least, if you haven't left a review, please do. We love the love. We love when you guys write in. If you leave a five-star review and you write something, we'll read it on this podcast right here, right now. I got one I'd love to read, Teresa. All right. This one comes to us from our friend Rach2030. Not sure if she's running for president, but (laughs) she's got my vote after this review. (laughs) Five stars titled Y'all Are Great. She writes, listen to a bunch of 90 Day Podcasts, but this one is my favorite so far. Still new to the show, but have listened a bit. Did y'all do the 90 Day when you got married? Just curious. No, we did not. We did not. I was here on a different visa. He got he got he got it easy with me. Uh, we still had to do a visa little dance uh, after a few years. But yes, we we got married. Not on a K-1. But, no, uh, but we did the whole green card. The so whole green card as, thing. As the foreigner that I am yes. and John as the American, yes. we did that. Yes. She writes, keep up the good work. Ooh. Enjoy every episode. Signed, Rachel, Rach2030. So thank I you. I love that. I, I am here for Rach2030. If you need a VP, holler at me. Is it spelled Rach, R-A-C-H or R-A-C-H-E? R-A-C-H. Okay, good. Because I have a bunch of Rachel friends and I call them Rach. I don't even know if they like it, but I never know how to spell it. So I'm just guessing. I do spell it R-A-C-H. That's it. And then Rachel, you'd add the E and then the L. Thank you. Okay. (laughs) Thanks, thanks, Jonathan. And thanks, Rach. What a review. What a review. Thank you so much. So that is the business. How about a little 90 day, by the way? All right. This is emphasis on the little, okay? A couple of quickies, all right? Let's do it. Number one, bad girl Riri is apparently friendly with bad girl Angela. No. Mm -hmm. Rihanna, for those of you who are not. No. Not hip to bad girl Riri. Angela Angela from Angela and Michael. Angela from Hazelhurst, Georgia. (laughs) Angela who just beat up a friend in New York. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Quite the rude girl. (laughs) If you, if you know what I mean. <laughs> That's very uh, good. Yeah, Angela apparently sent Rihanna on Instagram a video of one of her grandkids singing Monster okay. by Eminem and yeah. Rihanna. And Rihanna messaged back. and wasn't just like thumbs up or liked it. She wrote back, oh, her cute little accent is just too much. She is precious. Keep going, baby girl. Thanks for sharing with me. Wow. You think it was Rihanna or one of Rihanna's many, many account managers? That was going to be my question to you. Do we think Rihanna manages her own social media? I don't know. I think I think people who have uh, millions of followers have someone who manages their social media, but I think they filter it. And when there are messages worth of them taking the time and responding or seeing, I think they do it themselves. I think they kind Maybe. of like filter it for them it's like yeah. applying to a job you have hr who's gonna exactly. filter all the applications that don't align with what you're looking for and give you the ones that you <laughs> you might be interested in i don't think rihanna's interested in <laughs> angela's grandchild singing monster listen if drake True. loves 90 
True. Uh, I mean, Rihanna, she's a mom. She might have some extra time when the kids are asleep. She just wants to relax and do nothing with something dumb. Look. I can see her watching 90 Day. I can definitely see Rihanna watching 90 Day Fiance. No question. I just can't see her responding to Angela. Yeah, I guess. Right? Although, yeah. And- I mean, she, someone did. Angela is a monster, so the song choice is appropriate. But yeah, someone responded to her. Angela shared it on TikTok, and now I've shared it on our podcast. I always say, I'm not on TikTok because I feel like I'm too old for it, but if Angela's on TikTok... Ugh, that's why I'm not on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should get off. Here's why I don't like TikTok. And I know, I just think the algorithm hasn't found me yet. I'm sure if it learned me, it would serve me things that I'm actually interested in. I just am not interested in watching people do the same thing over and over again. And to me, that's what TikTok is. It's let's watch 2000 people do the same dumb dance. I don't need that. I like reels. I'll I'll be honest, but I, some of those like dance reels that are basically from TikTok, I kind of scroll past it. It doesn't get me. No, but sometimes you see some gold stuff like for example the guy in nebraska who was driving his longhorn bull <laughs> around in his car that he modified for the bull gold gold oh, pure gold and someone did an interview with his wife who's like yeah that's his best friend he's been driving him around for years all right i thought this was gonna be a short by the way <laughs> number two there's been speculation and we speculated about who kalani's hall pass was. Okay, yeah. Now there's confirmation. There's photographic evidence. Well, I saw that. Okay. Okay. Kalani changed her Instagram profile photo to a selfie. Okay. But in that selfie is about 30% of the hall pass's face. T- what? Yeah. So it's now confirmed. We did speculate. It's now confirmed. This guy's name is Dallas. He's 28 years old. So same age as Asuelu. He works for a private security company in California. Okay. Which is where Kalani lives. And here's the best part, or potentially the best part. Is he from Samoa? I don't know where he's from, but there is rumor. Okay, Therese, there's a rumor going She's around. pregnant? No. Okay. That he's going to make an appearance on 90 Day, The Last Resort. I know. Woo! So many of you guys messaged us this rumor. Oh, you didn't tell me that. I had to do the dirty digging myself. I thought you were always lurk in the background. Nah, it was a busy week. It was a busy week. And I got kicked out of Patreon. Oh. I can't log back in. You have to help me. Mm, maybe I'm going to take a turn and be on the old ones and twos and start messaging with no, our no, friends. No, 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 no. You got to help me log back in. All right, I'm going to log back in. Yeah. I'll help you. But yeah, that's that's what's the rumor. That's the new rumor. So the rumor was previously this guy named Dallas. Well confirmed. Now the rumor is he's going to be on the last resort, which I cannot wait. If that's the case, bring it on. How how would he appear there if Kalani blocked him? Maybe the counselor's going to be like, you know what? Let's unblock him. Let's get Savage to the bottom. DLC. Mm-hmm, totally. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. If you guys are not listening to the last resort coverage that we're putting out on Wednesdays, I think you're, you're doing yourself a disservice because... It's probably my favorite show right now. You know why? Because from day one, from the second they arrived, something's happening always, always. Oh, Every episode. It's bomb they, after bomb. It's wild. It's not sitting around getting to know people, listening to their problems. It's a like one bomb after another. Yeah, and they're 60-minute episodes on TLC, so it's just they're not dragging anything out. No. Nope. It's wall-to-wall content. It's absolutely nuts and... I can't wait for this. I can't wait for this week's. And a lot of it seems very real. Like a lot of it seems very raw. What a wild show. What a wild (laughs) show. So check it out if you guys aren't. We're covering it. We're dropping it on Wednesdays. Yes. All right. That is 90 Day, by the way. What do you say we do it? The reason we're here, Sunday night, 90 Day Fiance, before the 90 Days, episode 1414. Yes, and let's start with prior mentioned Misha and Nicola at the church. This is the church Mary and Brandon should go to. Completely empty. There's no hose in the pews. <laughs> There's nothing for Brandon to look at. This is where Mary needs to take Brandon. You know what's weird? I don't know why this keeps happening to me, but 
every single time I see Misha in these situations at a church praying, I always feel like, oh, look at her doing this for Nicola. Oh, yeah. I always forget that, wait a minute, she is as religious as he is. And this is very exciting to her. I keep, I have to remind myself that. And listen, I'm all for traveling and seeing the culture, seeing even going to churches for the architecture, for the stories, right? But for Misha, she's there for the religion. And I keep, I always forget about it. Yeah, that's the that's the underlying story here. It's about these two people trying to make it work. But underneath it, it's almost this uh, religious trip. It's almost like birthright if I were to go because... Misha's going and seeing all the sights. They're, they're not going out to fancy dinners and hit in the town and going to the club. Oh, they are a little they bit. They are, but every trip is based around the holy sites. Yeah, and I thought it was really cool because they are doing something they both are enjoying. And he's showing her everything, which is awesome. Yeah, yeah. There's definitely a historical spin to this trip which i like oh i love seeing it it's something we've never seen before on this show we need to go to israel i'm serious I, I would love to go i know i know you cannot go for free anymore which is a bummer but it's kind of my one of my bigger regrets is not taking that opportunity but i have a good friend who lives in israel so yeah yeah shout out to hannah yes all right so it's five days before misha has to leave israel they hit the church. They did their morning prayer. Now off to the Dead Sea, which reminds Misha of an overly salted dirty martini. I always wanted to go to the Dead Sea. Of course. Because you can just float of course. in the salt. And apparently it's so good for your skin. And I love taking care of my skin because it's always dry. So I would love to go. The ocean Plus, heals. Tell our friends how much I love salt. Um, she puts it on everything. She she's putting it on carrots now, which I put, really makes I me put question. Salt on everything really makes me question a lot about because, you. Because yeah. when you put salt on veggies, you can pretend those are chips. <laughs> I'm so I'm very serious. Okay, I'm you do very you. serious. That's why I put salt on carrots, tomatoes, cucumber, literally on everything. Because when I dip it into hummus or I dip it into whatever. I'm like, chips. All right. Yeah, it's got that crunch. Mm -hmm. Now it's mm -hmm. got that salt. That's why I do it. Smart. I like it. So, okay. They're at the beach. Let's just talk for a second about Nicola's farmer's tan. <laughs> this, you know the shirt, you know the shirt you put on that it looks like you're wearing no shirt because it's a classic like Jersey Shore boardwalk tee where it just looks like you're wearing either like a bathing suit if you're a girl, like a bikini, or it just looks oh, like you're yeah. topless. It looked like this is what he was wearing <laughs> because the sleeve mark is so apparent. It's unbelievable how white he is. Well, think about it. He lives in Israel. He lives around there. He walks to places. It's always sunny and, and hot. But I don't think he's a beach person. So he never takes his shirt off? I don't see him doing that too often. He oh. should, at least when he fishes yeah. or something. Yeah, blend so like, that tan. Even it out, yeah. <laughs> but I, I don't... Listen, out of all people on this show, he's the last person who cares about the looks. True. Like he, and I have to say, for his lack of care, he looks better than Gino. He Very, dresses better than Gino. Because he's not trying. He's, yeah. He's trying. He's doing the opposite of trying. Yeah. Gino's trying. Unfortunately. In, in his own Gino way. Unfortunately. And that's where he goes wrong. Yep. So, yeah. yeah, I can. Yeah, he doesn't strike me as a beach person. If you and I embraced the Florida heat and walked everywhere, that's what we would look like. Because if you we don't may. go to the beach. You may. No, you may because you could tan very easily. I know I do, but I don't. I don't think I'm pure white when I'm not tan. I guess I'm. I guess you I'm, are. Yeah, I guess you I can. Kind of, you can get pale like me. I guess I can. But then you are in the sun for five minutes, yeah. and you just get this beautiful color. Meanwhile, I'm <laughs> burned and I'm puking in the bathroom because I get sick from the heat. Yeah. Anyway, they sit down to do a uh, full body mud mask. I would love to do that. I would too. 
It's very sexual. It's very sexual, except when they do it, it was the least sexy, sexy thing. If you follow my drift. I do, but I, I think that was the most sex Nicole ever gotten in his life. It was the most he's ever touched a woman, but it looked like he was trying to get it over with. It, was, it looked like he was rushing through it. it. There was nothing sensual about it. What are you talking about? He kept going back to her butt, to her thighs. He kept adding more mud. He could not stop. Oh, really? I, he the could way, not stop. It looked like he was just... No, he couldn't. He kept going back. He could not stop. All right. I don't know, but... Misha, I don't think, was feeling it the way he was putting the mud on her. I think she was. I, I think she, well, she, they sit down a little bit dry after he puts it on her and she puts it on him. I think for him, it was a little uncomfortable because I think he was getting an erection. I'll just be honest. All right. I, and I think he's in public <laughs> and being touched by this beautiful woman I think he he just didn't know what to do with himself. And that's why he, you can see him a little like uncomfortable, like moving. And then when they're letting it dry, Misha brings up sex and she's like, I know you're a virgin. That's fine. No shame. But if you have any questions, ask me. This was so strange to me. This felt like a mom trying to give her son a birds and the bees talk. Yes, but Nicola said they had a sex ed in fifth grade, so he's good. <laughs> this is like what that's, that's 30, the last he's thought about sex was from fifth grade. Thirty years ago. Yeah, yeah. He's like, I know how a woman operates. I know everything. I mean, she's like, that's impossible. He goes, Well, I have a friend. Like, what does your friend tell you about the time he banged the girl? What does that even mean? I don't know. This was to me. This was such a cringy scene. I mean, Adam and Eve banked, didn't they? That's why they got kicked out of uh, heaven mm -hmm. or whatever. So Such I think, a religious scholar over here. I think, well, I told you about the children Bible with the stories I read when yes. I was a kid. I liked the stories. Um, but I think Nicola gets all his like sex ed from the Bible. And from Dirty Dancing. I love Dirty Dancing. I've it's, never seen it. I can't. We have to watch it. I can't. I know. Believe, I do. I want to. I can't believe you never watch it. I can't believe it either. It's, I, I want to. I watch it on the plane way too often. Although after seeing Nicola do his little Patrick Swayze, I don't know <laughs> if I do want to watch it. Oh, you do. Do I? Oh, you do because Patrick Swayze, he's just he's running death camp. You know that's not really what I'm into. What? You're trying to sell me on Patrick Swayze's dance moves. That's not really what no, I would tune into a movie for. No, no, not on his dance move, but him and Baby together. Oh, it's great. All right. They really, they, she didn't know how to dance when she, when she got to the camp. We should watch it. I think it's based off of the resorts that my family used to take me to, like in the Borscht Belt. Those, Maybe. those classic, like Jewish, the, I'm trying to think of the names of the ones that I would go to. The Concord I Hotel. think it might be the Concord. Come on. We'll see. I, I'm not sure, but Dirty Dancing and Grease. I freaking love I these zero two interest movies. In Greece. Have you seen it? I, I've seen enough of it. It's because you don't love John Travolta. I love <laughs> John Travolta. I love him in the movie. Oh, who 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 do you who speaks about uh, yeah. like the baby? Look who's talking. Who you look who's That's talking? A great movie. That's a great movie. Yeah. But Greece, the leather jackets, uh, the, ah, what a great movie. All the songs are amazing. Moving on. Moving Next on. Next time we're on the plane, I'm going to watch it. Okay. So let's cut to the Christian quarter where Jesus was sentenced to death. And this is like, it's like a little, little bit of a role play where you rent a cross and then you carry it down the street. Well, do you rent it? Because Nicole, Nicholas asked this guy, can, can we take it up all 14, 14 stages? Yeah. And the guy's like, oh, hey, he wants to take the cross. <laughs> and someone's like, give him the cross. Yeah. <laughs> Nicholas just like put a 20 in the guy's front pocket and was like, cross is coming with me. <laughs> so it's called the 14 stations of cross. Yes. And Jesus apparently was carrying his cross through, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? But I thought that, is that where he got crucified or sentenced or, I don't know a lot about Jesus. Yeah, I'm a little over my skis on this one, but he, he definitely, this is where he was resurrected. But I like that they carried the cross together. That was fun. 
Misha was so turned on. Oh my gosh. Someone's getting nailed tonight and it ain't Jesus. <laughs> yeah, that was good. Yeah. So, and we like abruptly go to the next day, yeah. right? It was just like, there was no, oh, she was around. How was the cross heavy? Tell us more. Well, because that's, that's the only complaint I have with a lot of these scenes. It's very cool. We're getting a lot of history. We're seeing a lot of historical sites. But it's just a little bit of a field trip for us. And the story doesn't progress because it is so faith-based or it is so serious or they just love the site that there's no drama there. Like they went to the church in the morning. That's it. And then they left and they went to the Dead Sea, right? Then they went through these 14 stations. Yes. And they left. That's it. Like it's cool to see, but it doesn't, the story doesn't progress when they do these trips. That's true. It's a very, really good point. So we get to the next day. Misha's getting some Irish coffee with whipped cream. I didn't, I don't think it was alcoholic. She said Irish. She said Irish cream, I believe. Mm. Which I don't know. Maybe, maybe that is the same. But yeah, when I hear Irish whiskey, I think there's booze in it. I mean, Irish cream is Bailey's. True. Very true. I just feel like Nicola's head would explode if Misha asked for a cocktail at 9 a.m. Well, he doesn't know what it is, so he Fair brings enough. it to her. Fair enough. And he's like asking for to be acknowledged for this act of him bringing her the coffee. Sure. And apparently Nic- Nicola starts saying like, wait a minute, like I don't just ask for these things, but I I do all these things. I check all these marks and then he just walks us through all everything like being affectionate hugging holding hands and then he says i tell you i love you all the time and you don't you used to say it on camera but you don't say it in person and we get this video montage of him telling her that he loves her and she's always like oh okay oh Nice, thanks. Yeah, I never noticed it. Me neither, but it's true. When they play the video back, yeah, oh, it's very true. He says, I love you, and and she doesn't. And her reason is that, well, certain times when I haven't said it back, for one, I didn't even realize, so I apologize for that. But also, since I've been here, I've gotten a little bit of a different Nicola than I'm used to or than I expected. And I get it. I like her being honest and saying it. Totally. Because but, I think it's because they both are very mature or, I mean, Nicola is some somewhat mature. She is mature and it's okay to say that, but they probably should have had this conversation before. I would agree. I would definitely agree. The trip's winding down and now he's just bringing it up. It leaves very little time to rectify the situation. But Misha does end up saying, Nico, I love you very much. There's no question. So it seems like all is well. They just now need to address the annulment. Yes. And we always say it. Talking to someone over the phone or on camera is very different than being with someone in person. Completely. Especially 24-7. Especially if you can't bang. Especially if you can't bang, you're all backed up. It's, whew, I can't even imagine. Yeah, well, we'll see, but I hope she'll get her a new man. So I can, strangely, I can see them together. I can see them making it. I know, I said this episodes ago and you all called in and were like, John, you're nuts. John, what are you talking about? You don't know anything about relationships. Because if you think about it, their only issue is the annulment. And it was the fact that he was terrified bringing her home because he felt like her his mom won't appreciate her being divorced with kids. Yeah. But they don't have any other issues no. if you think about it. I know. Now you're realizing. Yeah. Literally. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Let's talk about someone who has a lot of issues. So many issues. A lot of issues and fluffy cats. It's Christian and Cleo. It's time for Thanksgiving dinner. And what do you normally do while the food cooks, Christian? Sip whiskey and talk smack. Nice. Sweet. That's what we do too. (laughs) Sweet. Yeah. Um, If that was a turkey, Teresa, 
That's the smallest turkey I've ever seen. I, my note says, Christian is stuffing a chicken, question mark, or a tiny <laughs> turkey, question mark. Hold me closer, <laughs> tiny turkey. Well, my parents are coming to visit us in a couple of months uh-huh. before Thanksgiving. My mom is asking if we're gonna uh, if we're gonna do a Thanksgiving, if I'm gonna make a turkey. And I told her I will not no. because in my head, turkey is this ginormous bird. Yeah. However... If there is a mini turkey I could make, I would. Yeah, I don't think there is. Just for fun. I don't think there is. I just think in Europe, they don't allow GMOs or anything. And so you, you got to shoot some steroids into your turkey. I mean, let's make this thing a party. That's a great point because my grandma makes makes a turkey. Yeah. Well, it's, um, it's, uh, okay, she makes a turkey and then she makes a duck goose. Her friend mixes ducks and goose. I used to play that game in elementary school it's called the duck goose okay and my grandma loves it it's this mixed bird we do turducken what's that it's a turkey and a duck really yeah you're doing a duck and a goose yeah which duck i goose. feel like that's goose. that's almost like inbreeding what do you mean it seems like a duck and a goose seem very similar yeah but the meat's good okay all right all right uh we will not be doing that but Anywho. Christian is doing something. He's stuffing something. Some yeah. sort of a bird. Yeah. His bar friend is busy, so she will not be attending. Yes. It's Cleo's happy about it. Just going to be Christian, Cleo, and Jane. And we know Jane is not the biggest fan of Christian. So that's got him a little bit on high alert. But hey, he's he's still throwing together this party. He's going to make the best of it. Here's, here's something I realized. Like, I I love holidays. And I love, and I always say it, I say it, and I say it because someone pointed it out a while ago, we have a perfect setting because you're Jewish Mm -hmm. and I'm (laughs) non-American. So we don't have to argue over, oh, whose family are we going to for Christmas or whose family are we going to Thanksgiving? Thanksgiving is always your family. Mm -hmm. And if we do Christmas in Czech, it's obviously my family. There you go, guys. and then Kanuka just moves around every year, so we just adjust, mm-hmm. right? We adapt to Kanuka, and it's just so easy because we have friends who are married, and they still split up for the holidays, which is ridiculous to me. Yeah, that's dumb. Yeah. If anything, just alternate my family this year, your family next year. Yeah, but I think some families might be like, oh, no, you need to be here, right? Yeah, we well, don't have that problem. Ridiculous. We don't have to even think about it. No. How beautiful. Very How beautiful. easy. Very beautiful. Am I right? Love it. Okay. All right. And yeah, like Mother's Day and Father's Day, that's hardly a thing in Czech. Oh, it is a thing. Mother's Day is a thing. It's but becoming a thing. No, Mother's Day has always been a thing. I remember making like drawings for my mom when I was a kid, but Father's Day eh, has becoming a thing in the past couple of years. Okay. So back to Christian and Cleo. Jane arrives. The wine starts flowing. And, and I've never seen Teresa nod faster or harder than when Cleo was like, you need to look in the eyes when you cheers. Yes, you do. I'm bothered by people who don't do that because it's rude. But yeah. Christian did exactly what every American person does when I say, you literally look like you're about to release a fart because your your eyes get like out of your head. It's like someone squeezes you. You're trying so hard well, to make the been, eye contact. You've just been put on the spot. You've, yes. been, you've just been told you have to look in the eyes, so you're like forcing it. It's not I'm, natural. I'm glad I have you now because you say it for me. You yeah. say it to everyone. I love that. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Um, so I thought Christian was being a pretty good host. We can say a lot of bad things about Christian. Not the biggest fan of him, but he was hosting a nice Thanksgiving. I think this was his best um, episode. Yeah, I have one bone to pick with him. It's not the wishbone, but I do have a bone <laughs> to pick with him. I always do the wish wishbone. I brought it back yeah. to your family's tradition. I always wrestle it and I usually win. Yeah, you really do. You're two. I think you're two for two. Two, two for two. Yeah. yeah. So we'll get to it. But Jane brings up the Thanksgiving and how it's the three of them and wonders, is it? usually like this? Is it a bigger thing? Is it a lot of people? And Christian's like, yeah, this is the smallest Thanksgiving I've ever had. And Cleo says, well, he did invite someone. He didn't want it to just be the three of us. Yeah. And I'm going to put this on Cleo. 
if you guys talked about it and you made peace with it, don't bring it up in front of your friend who hates him already. Well, here's my... There's no need Here's my it. thought about this. Cleo's over, Christian. Cleo's not into this relationship anymore. She doesn't see a future. Because when you're in a new relationship, when you start dating someone, you want to paint them in the best light. You want them to look like the best person you've ever dated. You want your friends to be jealous. What? You get to date this person? The fact that she's already throwing him under the bus and making him look like a shitty boyfriend to me means, oh, she doesn't see a future with him. She doesn't care that Jane thinks he's a shitty person. I don't think so, but I think she did not like it. And she just wants someone in her corner because Christian doesn't seem anything wrong with what he did. But Jane is already in Cleo's corner when it comes to the whole lying about sex. True. And not being open about that. And so now you're just giving Jane another reason not to like your boyfriend. To me, that doesn't seem like someone who likes their own boyfriend. If you want to get other people to dislike them. I guess. But yeah, Jane doesn't like this because she's like, wait a minute. Who did you invite? You don't know anyone here. <laughs> and Christian's like, well, when Cleo went to class, I went to this bar and met this American girl and she was alone. I was alone. So we started chatting and ooh, Jane does not like that. That's interesting. Did you invite any guys? And Cleo's like, yeah, Christian only seems to talk to girls. I'll tell you this. I'd say if I went to a bar by myself for whatever reason, let's say I'm traveling, I'm at the airport and a dude started talking to me, I would maybe have a polite chit chat, but I would not necessarily hold a conversation. You would invite him to Hanukkah? <laughs> I mean, probably not. But like, I don't know. It, it depends what it, if, if the guy's asking me about, I don't know. I don't think I would necessarily talk to a stranger like this, but I would, I would not ignore him entirely. I would maybe have a polite conversation. It's not apples to apples. Because, True. Because you're saying, if a guy started talking to me, the thing you should be saying is, I wouldn't start a conversation oh, with a random yeah. guy. If I a wouldn't. girl started talking to me at a bar, I'm in airports a lot. If I'm at an airport bar and a girl starts talking to me, depends what the conversation is. If there's something to talk about, I'll talk to her. Yeah, but you I wouldn't, wouldn't be like extremely engaged with her and exchange social media and stuff. Depends what she, if she started talking about 90 day fiance, I might start talking about it. I might be like, oh, my wife is, right? Like, I definitely wouldn't keep you a secret. If it was an interesting conversation that I had things to talk about, I would talk about it. But the point is, I would never start a conversation with a random woman at a bar. Correct. I, yes, you, you would talk. I would talk too if someone started talking and was interesting enough for me. But you wouldn't be like, oh, like, can I get your Instagram? No. Like, I would never give no. <laughs> any stranger. And then invite them over. Yeah, my information because why? The only reason why is because oh, I am not happy with you and I'm like looking for something else potentially, right? Right. Which is, not the, which is obviously not the case with us, just to make it clear. But I think Christian likes to flirt. Completely. And he, his excuse is, I don't see an issue with it. I would talk to a guy. I would talk to a girl. Half of the population is women. And I just happened to talk to a couple of women recently. And the only reason why I'm not giving him sh and shit entire is because he's very open about it. If he was hiding it, if he saw him, if he saw him at the bar and he gets home and tells, hey, I, just, uh, I was just uh, alone, had a few beers, right? He comes home and he tells her all about it. I'm not saying it's the right move. I'm not saying if you told me that I would be mad at you, why are you chatting out random females, right? But I think in his head, maybe he he hasn't really been dating a lot. Maybe he's always like that funny drunk friend, right? I don't mm -hmm. think women really see him as a potential partner necessarily. So I think him talking to women is not as bad as it sounds. See, I think maybe it's not mischievous, maybe it's not malicious, but the fact that he can't 
see what he's doing is making his girlfriend uncomfortable. The fact that he can't acknowledge that and accept that, oh, this is making my girlfriend uncomfortable. To me, that's a problem. He he yes. should he should accept that and he should be smart enough and aware enough that yes, maybe me getting drunk and talking to women would make my girlfriend uncomfortable, but he refuses to or is unable to see that perspective. To me, that's troubling. I agree. All I'm saying is like at least he's not hiding it. Sure. Sure. That would be worse. Okay. I think now's a good place to take a break. All right. We'll tell you about our sponsors for this episode. And when we come back, we're going to head to Croatia. We'll be back in a second. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Hey, guys, I want to take a moment to talk about something we all face at one point or another. Feeling uncertain about where we are going in life and what the right path is. I've been there and it's not easy. I've told a story on the podcast before of me coming to America, feeling overwhelmed, out of place, and unable to even order a coffee. Fortunately, I had someone to talk to, which helped me find focus and gave me the support I needed to feel comfortable and confident in a foreign place. Therapy can be just that for so many people. If you're considering starting therapy, I would highly recommend checking out BetterHelp. It's an online platform designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. You just fill out a short questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist. And if you want, you can switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. And speaking of money, right now you can get 10% off your first month by going to betterhelp.com slash mtrpod. That's betterhelp. H-E-L-P dot com slash M-T-R-P-O-D. Because therapy isn't just for people who've experienced major trauma. It's great for learning positive coping skills, setting boundaries, and helping you stay connected to what you really want. So let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash M-T-R-Pod today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp. H-E-L-P dot com slash M-T-R-P-O-D. Hey guys, this episode is brought to you by Smart for Life. Between podcasting, traveling, and everyday life, John and I are always on the go, which makes it hard to plan and cook healthy meals every day. But thanks to Smart for Life, we never miss out on great tasting, balanced nutrition. That's absolutely right. Smart for Life is a doctor-designed health and wellness company that specializes in delicious and nutritionally balanced snacks with a focus on weight management and overall well-being. They have so many amazing choices from cookies to kids, but my favorite is their gourmet protein bars. (laughs) Tell them your favorite flavor, Teresa. (laughs) <laughs> it's s'mores. <laughs> True. Smart for Life does have s'more protein bars. They also have lemon protein bars, cinnamon pecan protein bars, and more. You can even choose a variety box. And they don't just taste great. They are made with high quality ingredients too. So whether we're traveling or recording back-to-back podcasts, Smart for Life has become our go-to meal replacement. And if you are watching your portions like me, each bar is individually wrapped. Now, here's the best part. Right now, we can save you 20% on your next order by using promo code MREAL20 at smartforlife.com. That's right. Just use promo code MREAL20, which is M-R-E-A-L-2-0 at smartforlife.com for 20% off. (laughs) Thank you to Smart for Life for sponsoring this podcast. And Teresa, hand over that smorf. (laughs) Hey guys, this episode is brought to you by Nax Active. We've all heard the sayings, look good, feel good, and work hard, play hard. Well, Nax Active doesn't just say it, they live by it. And here's the thing. Activewear has to do more than just look amazing. It has to perform amazing. And when it does, it can help you look, feel, and perform your best too. 
That's what Next Active is all about. Located right in the heart of Los Angeles, Next Active is high performance activewear that delivers. And that's not all. The company is overseen by an amazing all women team, too. And here's the best part. Right now, when you shop nextactive.com, we can save you 20% of your purchase by using promo code REALITY20NUX. That's REALITY20NUX. Guys, I'm loving the one by one long sleeve set, but there are so many amazing collections to choose from and super cool colors and cuts. Everything you need to go from the gym to brunch. Hello, bottomless Bloody Marys. <laughs> so again, save 20% of your purchase right now at naxactive.com with promo code REALITY20NUX. That's REALITY20NUX at checkout. Thank you for sponsoring this podcast and make positive moves with Next Active. And we're back. Hello, Jonathan. Hello, Teresa. How are you? I'm um, good because I love Croatia. Never been. We have to go. I've been so many times that I just love it. I've been to Split. I've been to a lot of the islands. I've been to a lot of places in Croatia because it's driving distance from Czech. Have you ever been to Rasvin's parents' house? No. Oh. Never. But heard, his heard mom the food looks there like is, she's 25. Heard the food there is delicious. It looked delicious. A little homemade chicken noodle. Oh, my gosh. Send my mom makes that, too. I know. It's delicious. It looked like your mom's. Right? Yeah. It's delicious. Yeah, it's very good. So, yeah, they're they're in Croatia. They're going to go see Rasvin's family. Amanda is being so lovey-dovey. Okay. I think Amanda had a stroke or she has this split personality that basically half of the trip she's a biatch and the other half she's trying to hardcore bang him wherever they go. It's Jacqueline Hyde. Literally. It's very unnerving to me. It makes me think think yes there is a psychological element here it's almost like she loves the fact that now he's not that into her that he's pushing her away and i think she loves it it's almost like a game like okay now he doesn't want me but let me let me get him back let me well, see yeah, if i can there is that's interesting there is always the element of the chase is always a little more exciting than once you've caught what you're chasing um but when she does it, it just seems, I don't know, manipulative or there's something to it where you go, I don't even know if she actually does feel this way. She's just doing it to elicit mm-hmm. a reaction. Like that's not like when she's just like sucking on the side of his face. It's like, I don't even think she really wants to suck on the side of his face. She just wants to somehow make him feel some mm-hmm. way about it. And oh, that's yeah. why she's doing it. For sure. I have to say this. I think Amanda's very pretty, but she has zero fashion sense because all her outfits are like from 1999. Yeah, I feel like she shops at Aeropostale or something. But once she puts her head in a bun, that looked good. Yeah. Oh, I find her attractive. Yeah. I don't. Her clothing is not my my style. And for some reason, I don't like her hair down, which I usually do do appreciate on women i do that too but she looks good with a bun so she was like rocking this bun while she's all over rasvan i'm like okay oh rasvan good luck (laughs) yeah yeah then so they get to split croatia i found this strange when they were in the cab and the rasvan's like talking to the driver hey do you speak english how do you curse i found very strange very strange Mm mm-hmm your family lives in Croatia, too. You do you not speak any Croatian? I would or? love to know why his entire family living in Croatia while he re- lives in Romania. Because I assume the, he is Romanian, right? Unless he's know. Croatian. But then you would know the language. I think he does know the language. Or was I he think asking he was, the driver how he curses in English like did he find it funny if the driver cursed in English but the no, driver he wasn't cursing in English no the driver was cursing in Croatian yeah. or because what? he doesn't speak Croatian it's, it was to me it was like such a weird scene interesting yeah so 
Then I they... know how to say watermelon in Croatian. Please. Vodna picha. You know why I know it? Because the word picha, <laughs> it's a really, really bad word in Czech. Oh. It's like, um, if you call someone that, it's like really like nasty. It's almost like, yeah, it's nasty. I hate you when people say, say it. it. You can say it. It's like, I'm trying to find the equivalent in right. English. It's literally like, um, I don't even know. It, it's bad. Riveting, Teresa. Yeah. Thank you for that. It can be like, it can mean your vagina. Beep. It can mean your vagina Beep. in a really bad way. Got it. But it can, it, you can call someone that and it's just nasty. Right. I hate I hate it. Right. But I always found it hilarious that that word means watermelon in Croatian. All right. Juicy. Let's get to the house. Everyone's nervous. This is the first girl Rasmus introducing to his parents since his ex. So he is a little nervous. Amanda is a little nervous. There's the added pressure because Rasmus' mom hated his ex. So it's tense. A little tense, right? Oh, yeah. They get to the apartment. Mother Daniela looked like she could have been Amanda's mom. Yes, she also looks like she... She doesn't look like she is a mom of a 27-year-old. No. Very Looks good. very good. Looks very, very good. good. They sit. They have a feast. There's the homemade chicken noodle soup. Mom wants to talk about Amanda's two children. And I liked that when Amanda was communicating, she looked at Rasmund's mom. Mm-hmm. Because I feel like a lot of times, and I'm probably guilty of it once in a while, you look at... Who's going to translate for you? I guess. Sheila and David do it all the time, or they did. They looked at Amy. A lot of times, I'll maybe look at you. But I liked that even though Amanda was speaking English, she was speaking English to Rasmund's mom, and then just off to the side, Rasmund would translate. She was trying to make a connection, which I thought- And she was really asking the questions. Yeah, I thought, you go, Amanda. Good for you. I'm not always on your side, but I I liked what you're doing here. Yeah, so mom is asking about the kids. Amanda says she has good kids. And then she's like, ask your mom why she didn't like your ex. Yeah, why? And Razvan is like, really? Like, you really want me to ask? And she's like, yeah, I want to hear from your parents. Yeah, and dad takes this chance to jump in. Avram? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And just, a, it, it's simple. They never talk to each other. And ex was stubborn. And she, controlling. And controlling. She never heard our side of things. And she didn't love Rasmin. They and weren't she didn't a, support him. They weren't a match. Mm-hmm. And dad started crying. I know. And Amanda looks at Rasmin and she's like, are we a match? And he's like, not now. Not here. But because of this, Avram is picking up on that energy. And he's like, something's not adding up over here. Like something's not as... Uh, as nice as it might seem like. Why? Well, I, I almost wonder if dad speaks a little English because Rasmund did say like under his breath, you told me we were in a match the other day, but let's not talk about that here. So I, yeah. almost, I almost wonder because dad jumped in when Amanda was saying, ask your mom. And then dad started to pick up on what was happening when they were talking under under their breath. And so dad consents. Yeah, there's some uneasy energy between them and He's not 100%. Well, what's uneasy is that Razvan says, well, yeah, my ex, she didn't support me. She didn't love me. I didn't feel, I didn't feel that from her. It's like Amanda. I don't feel that from Amanda. Yeah. He's literally saying, I'm over this. Totally. And I'm literally here introducing you to my parents because of the show. And you're just trying something that she, her, I think, I think he was in until she said some nasty things to him when totally. they were visiting the castle and he's done. Totally. He's so done. Totally. I think he's like counting days for her to leave. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to Teresa's favorite. Love Dempsey, hate Statler. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Dempsey Dempsey's going to introduce Statler to her friends. They're going to go to Newcastle. They're going to go to a pub where we meet Georgia and Lindsay, L-I-N-Z-I. Interesting. Well, Statler on the way there, she's like, okay, going to the pub full of British people. And Dempsey's like, you love British people. She's like, yeah, 
I mean, I love the accents. Like, I'm done with the American. And Dempsey's like, because you slept with all of them. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I think there is some some sort of an energy over totally. Statler being sex obsessed. And we see it at the pub. Yeah, they get there. We meet the friends, couple of lookers. Good thing they're not blonde or I feel like Statler may be going. Oh, yeah. Looking, oh, yeah. Looking that way. But they start talking about, oh, what are you going to do for your birthday, Dempsey? And Statler's like, well, I have plans. It's a surprise. But I'll ruin the surprise right here, right now. I'm taking her to Edinburgh. Like she couldn't even say it's Edinburgh. It. She couldn't even pronounce Edinburgh. So Stella was like, I planned everything, and it involves mostly sex, and eh, because it's the only thing I'm good at. Yeah, she's like, oh, a lot of sex. I've had a lot of sex. I'm, yes, I'm very, very open about sex. Like, I go to sex parties and sex and sex and sex. And friends were just like, what? Here's my perverted guess. Statler was taking a temperature check on whether or not we could get an orgy going. Maybe, because I think, I think she also talks more than maybe she acts on and I think she created this persona about her just banging women. Oh, I don't. I actually think she's... I think she did too, but you can leave it a secret. You don't have to tell everyone. Oh, well, those are two very different things. One is creating a persona and embellishing what you've done. Another is just thinking it's super cool that you bang a lot and... I think Statler bangs a lot and thinks it's super cool and thinks that's the most interesting thing about her. And so she leads with that. Well, Europeans are not prudes, but in general, I don't think sex is a topic you discuss with the people you meet for the first time in a pub. It's not for Americans either. Usually we don't lead with that. Yes, but I would say Americans are a little more open so I can see Americans doing it over Europeans. Perhaps. Then we get to this conversation about the long distance relationship and how they've worked long distance and how they've tried to make it work. And Dempsey basically did what Cleo did. True. She brought back that experience she didn't like to kind of show her friends how crazy look, Statler look, is. Look at what I'm dealing with over here. Yes. Not, because, not only is she just DTF, but she's DTM. What's DTM? Down to move. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> she sure is. Because Dempsey literally comes out as like, yeah, you know, like we've been talking seven months and she came here and now she's asking me to move in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And friends were like, wait, so you want to move to England because you like England? And Statler is like, no, this place is fucking horrible. It's so uh, cold. Like, I don't like it, uh, but I would move for her. Yeah, that's Why not, would you say that about someone's home? That's how, And that's not what you've said before. Yes. You, you are ready to move to England for your last woman. Yeah. So don't say, oh, the only reason I would move to this horrendous place is for Dempsey. That's just a bold-faced lie and we have it on camera. And I think she knows that she's not making the best impression. So she's like, ah, oh, I'm going to go to the bathroom. Just number one. Just uh, just number one. I'll be, uh, I'll be back. <laughs> Why? Yeah, she doesn't need to have diary of the bub because she has diary of the mouth. Things just... Very, very true. And I understand. She has ADHD. I'm well aware of that. Yes. But she said it. We're going to comment on it. And... So she leaves and friends are a little nervous about Statler and they're telling her like, well, the sex and her being very codependent, like that's not you, Dempsey. That's not your girlfriend. No, she's she's definitely worried that Statler's moving too quickly. And it worries Dempsey too, because she's Dempsey's independent. Dempsey's living on that farm, doing her thing, living in her caravan. And she doesn't want to be suffocated. Mm -hmm. And so she's starting to see these things as red flags. Yes. And here's my thought. There is nothing wrong if you are with your partner all the time or most of the time. Like you and I do it. Like we do it, but we do it with love. 
but we got to that point. We didn't start dating and just be like, oh my gosh, like we're going to be together all the time because that would scare me. That? I would not like if you from day one, you started saying, oh, I just need to be around you all the time. Like we just need to do everything together. When I love someone, I would be like, whoa, like give me, give me a break. I need my own space. And I do. You do too. What happened is that like two people who like their own space found each other and enjoy each other's company so much so that we do spend a lot of time together because we love it and we got to that point without saying. Correct. Statler just comes out and keeps saying all these things that I'm scared for Dempsey. Correct. And I think maybe what you're you're dancing around too is the real issue with codependency is it's usually from what I understand, one-sided. There yeah. is a codependent, right? And that person is willing to do anything to hold on to the relationship. They don't want to to be abandoned. They don't want to lose that connection. And it's a little bit one-sided. And that's why it, there's an issue. For us, we love being together, so we spend time together. It's not me being like, I need my independence. I need time alone. I need to be on my farm. And you being like, no, 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 you're not my shadow. That's when yeah. there becomes an issue. And perhaps you're right when you say we grew to that we point did. together. Statler is not allowing them to grow to that point together. She's forcing it on Dempsey. Yes. And that's the problem. I'm telling you, if... Everyone, I think once you start dating someone, you define your relationship. And if being around each other all the time makes you happy and it works, I don't think it's codependent, right? Because you grew to that point and you like it. Correct. But like started just talking about it before it's even happening. That's crazy. Yeah. So let's go to Scotland. This is the surprise birthday getaway that Stadler planned. She feels like it's my last chance to prove to Dempsey that I can live in the moment and I can be fun and I can go with the flow. And I can show her that she should invite me to live with her. <laughs> yeah. So they hit the road and they're talking about the meeting with the friends and Dempsey's like, yeah, my friend said they'd love to meet you again. They also told me you may be codependent. And so I was like, yeah, so what? So what? I want to be with my partner all the time. Like, I don't see what's wrong with being clingy. And that's the issue is that one person mm -hmm. sees it one way and the other person sees it the other way. If they both saw it that way, then I think it'd be a different story. Yes. So a couple hours later, they arrive. And the surprise is that they're going to stay at a castle. Hello. Which is really cool. Hello. You can also stay at a castle in Czech. All right, let's I do it. I would love, I've never done it. Let's I would love it. to do that. Let's do it. And Dempsey loves it. She loves it so much. So they get to the room and the first thing they do, they do some bubble bath <laughs> and just jump in, chat. And it's almost like Dempsey's so overwhelmed and happy that now she's thinking, yeah, maybe I shouldn't be pushing Statler away. She just loves me so much. Yeah. It's almost like altering her mind, just this gesture. But what's creepy about this is that Statler has, uh, what's the saying? An alternative motive. Ulterior. Ulterior. Mm -hmm. How do you say alternative? Ulterior motive of showing Dempsey all the love to trigger her into Dempsey saying, you know what? Just move in with me. Let that lease go. I just come over and let's live together forever. And here's why it is a trick. And it's interesting that you use that word because Dempsey is tricking herself in the sense that this is a vacation. Mm -hmm. It's so easy to be in love on vacation when you're not living in the real world and there's no pressures or stress of your job or day-to-day -day life. Everything's great. And this vacation is the first time Dempsey said, you know what? This is nice. The security, the safety, being the center of attention and the focus because you're on vacation in this castle. Mm -hmm. This isn't real life. 
No. Staller's, tr- Staller's tricked you into mm-hmm. thinking this is what life is like with Statler. This is not what life is like with Statler. No, this is vacation Statler. This is vacation Statler. Yeah, so that's where it ends, and the previews looked good. Oh, yeah. Yes. All right. Real quick, Gino and Jasmine. This was a quick, sad segment. Yeah, so basically, it's it's right after the I Banged Dane incident. Pretty recently. <laughs> <laughs> and I filmed it for some reason. Oh, I, I forgot about it. So Jasmine is sitting outside, and Gino walks towards to her and he's like this is not the wait i need to find my gino voice this is not the way i thought this trip will turn is it my gino voice now stephen hawking you do it i'll pick it up tell me what he said this is not the way i thought this trip will turn this is this not the way I thought. Nah. This not, it's like more of a lisp to it. This is not the way I thought, Jasmine. No. No? Well, we lost it. You lost it, too. Hold no. on. Uncle Marco's throwing a pasta party in the apartment <laughs> complex. Yeah. Jasmine, put your tits away. Put your tits away and stop trying to persuade me with your sexuality. Leave my hat right where it is. I need to help Uncle Marco set up for the pasta party. <laughs> okay, you found it. That, now me. Okay. This is not the way I thought. (laughs) (laughs) It got worse. (laughs) Anyway, so he gets her. He sits next to her. And just Jasmine's like, I think this is the first time I'm seeing her this devastated without her being panicking and having a panic attack and crying. She's just almost in peace with what happened. She's upset. Yeah. But she... She all, almost, um, what's the word? Owns up to it and be like, yeah, it happened. And I'm, you, you said I'm not the most important person in your life. You said after marriage, who cares? I want to be now. I'm not. And so that's it. Well, think about it. You said it. This is right after that fight. So there's been no time to think about what happened. They're still in the moment. They're still probably mm. exhausted. And dealing with the blowback of what they just said. So in this moment, you kind of have to throw your hands up and be like, yeah, I said all that shit. I guess we're done. I can't believe that after all she said, that Gino is coming to her trying to fix it. Well, she did say, we shouldn't brush over this part. She did say she was lying. She didn't bang Dane. She just said that because she was hurt. Oh, I missed it. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, that's a big part of the story. Yeah. Gino's like, Gino's like, I don't think you should be yelling like you were about cheating on me. Is that true? And Jasmine says, no, I told you that because I'm very hurt. You said I'm not the most important person in your life. So that's why I said it. Gino is like. Just a very specific lie, (laughs) which is very, like, I kind of believe she did it. If she was like, well, I fucked my ex. Then I'd be like, eh, it's probably just the heat of the moment. But she's like, I fucked Dane very recently and I videotaped it. And I'm like, this is very specific. Yeah. She's like, very recently, about a month ago. Yeah. Like, this is very specific. <laughs> yeah. It was a Tuesday. We watched Dirty Dancing and did mud baths. And I was like, oh, this sounds well, familiar. Gina was like, I didn't say you're less important. I just said you're equal to my family. And when we get married, you will be the most important. Yeah. Jasmine, not good enough. Not good enough. And so she's like, get your things and go. I'm breaking up with you. Walk away. And Gino's like, well, if that's what you want me to do, I should probably go. And she's like, yes. And he does. He leaves. And Jasmine's like, I will never love someone as much as I love Gino, but I'm not the most important person in his life. So uh, we, we have so many issues. I can't deal with this anymore. And I And I understand her psyche because the reason she's with a guy like Gino is because she thinks he's going to worship the ground I walk on. He's going to worship the brush that I brush my teeth with. (laughs) I'm going to be the center of his world. She's got such low self-esteem. She does. That that's why she's with Gino. And now Gino can't even put her first. He's putting her on an equal pedestal as Cousin Dana? 
<laughs> how is she going to reconcile? Like, how is she going to deal with that? She can't. And so she needs to go find someone else. Well. Who will? Gina gets in a cap and he leaves. See you later. And he's like, it's over. I don't think it's over. It's not over. It's not over. <laughs> it's not over. That's this, this, this couple. They're toxic. They're over all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see. They'll be we'll back. see how over it actually is. They'll be back. All right. Let's finish with just whew, one of the most beautiful segments of 90 Day Fiance ever. David and Sheila heading to the beach. A romantic getaway. Full day number one. I feel like Sheila stayed up all night and crammed for this date because all of a sudden she can just sign. I know. And David says, she's not good at signing, but she is doing it and I love it. It's it's really amazing to see them communicate like this mm -hmm. because you look at them and you go, this is all was, that was missing. Like if you think about it, the way she signs is probably like someone... With a broken English, right? You can understand, totally. you can puzzle it together easily, but it's not perfect. I was getting jealous watching because I'm trying to learn Czech. Czech is so hard. And one of the big reasons that it, I find it so hard is because of the accent, the pronunciation. There's sounds. Even you, Teresa, had to go to school you are a native Czech speaker and you had to go to school to learn how to pronounce some of these sounds. It wasn't school. It was a therapist. You went to a speech therapist yeah. to learn how to pronounce some of these sounds. So imagine me trying to pronounce some of these sounds. I don't know how to sign, but I imagine you take that element out of it. There is no, oh, you have to get the accent mm. right. Right? There aren't tough sounds True. as far as I know. So that I was... I mean, it was beautiful and amazing to see that, but I was, I was like, dang, like you, you take that element out of it. And she sounds, from what I can tell, as I said, she, he can understand her. He, she spells things out too. Yeah. But it's still. Sure. They can have a conversation. Totally. So they go snorkel. They see some swell turtles. Beautiful. They're signing underwater. It was great. That's, I was like, whoa. I didn't think about it, but if you can sign, you can talk underwater. Sure. Yeah, it was awesome. And it was it was even more great to see because of all the shit Sheila's just gone through. Mm -hmm. Like, she deserves this. She needed this. Yeah, and for, for David, too, I was thinking about it. He probably, probably, he told us he's never been outside of the U.S. And I'm sure it's hard for him. Yeah. Having a disability, it's not easy. And now he is. He's living his best life. He has the woman he loves. And he's doing all these fun things. Yeah. And, and this date, this scuba, this or this snorkel, this was the reassurance that David needed to know, I'm going to propose. Well, for him, he loved seeing the effort from mm -hmm. Sheila that she is trying to sign, that she is trying to communicate, and it's important to her. He saw the sign, and it opened up his eyes. He saw, <laughs> he the, saw sign. the sign. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So cut back to the resort. They're all dressed up. They're looking good. They're going to the restaurant at the hotel. It's very romantic. Yes, and David got some vino. But before the wine comes, they cheers with water. Yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. You got wine coming. I don't even cheers with water with kids. I'm like, don't. Don't touch my no, glass. No, it's bad luck. It you, is you, bad you luck. You look in the eyes and you keep that water away from me. Yeah, but our nieces try. I'm always like, yeah. cheers. <laughs> yeah, but I'll, I'll see you in 18 years. I'm not touching anyone's glass. <laughs> yeah. And then when the wine comes, I guess they poured it in David's glass for him to do the taste. To be like, yeah, we'll keep the bottle. But then he poured his wine into Sheila's glass from his glass. I'm like, this is just making a mess everywhere. <laughs> Yeah, but I think it was because, A, he didn't think about it, and B, I don't think she drinks. She didn't like the wine. No, I, I don't strong. think she drinks wine. No, it didn't look like it. No. Then the food comes out, and this food looked good. Talking very good. Chicken wings and steak, quite the feast. Very, very good. Very good looking. But Sheila lost her appetite. I didn't get this. So the food comes, and she, she tells the cameras, I've never had such a romantic 
dinner. I've never been to this resort. She asks David, have you ever been on a date like mm-hmm. this? And David says no. Mm-hmm. So that made her happy. She she feels like this is their own experience. And she goes from that to, I lost my appetite because I'm sad. Mm-hmm. And yeah. David is like panicking. He's like, oh my gosh, it's probably her mom or her son. And maybe I shouldn't propose. Like, I don't know what to do. And she comes out and says it. She says, I'm sad because you're leaving mm. soon. Yeah, she's crying. He's sweating. Wet. He's so wet. He's, he's such a ba- <laughs> he's such a wet dog. And he's like, and she's like, yeah, I'm sad. You're leaving soon. You're going back home. And so David's David does a 180. He goes from, oh my gosh, this is a ruin to actually this is perfect. So he stands up. He gives her. <laughs> he chucks his wine. He, he chucks his wine. He gives her a glass. They do a cheer. Yeah. And he just gets down on his knee. And he goes, we've been talking a long time. I love you. You love me. He's just quoting Barney at this point. (laughs) (laughs) Talk about a large swollen purple thing. Um, He stands up and he cheers Sheila and then he gets back down on his knee. Wait, are you talking about the dinosaur thingy? Yeah, Yeah. Barney. Yeah. The song, I love you. You love me. Oh, that's Barney? Yeah. We're oh, I didn't know that. I've heard the song, him. but I, I didn't know it was the dino. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So he gets back on his knee and he's, he whips out this ring and he says, honey, babe, I have something for you. And Sheila's like, what? What? He goes, will you marry me? And Sheila signs for real. And he's like, yeah, for real. And she's like, yes, honey, babe. And then he stands up and he knocks over the wine, but it doesn't matter because they're engaged. Yes, and literally the wine goes straight onto Sheila's rice. I mean, wine sauce, wine not out. that. Oh, yeah, a little red wine vinegar. They're very, they're very happy. Sheila loves her ring, and she keeps asking, "Is this for real?" And I'm like, "Is she's she like, asking sl- about the ring?" She's like, "Slap me, slap me." David is like, I'm going to slap you. It is for real, and I'm not going to slap you. Yeah. It was beautiful. It It was. was. so beautiful. I loved Uh, this entire segment. Very happy for David and Sheila. Yeah. It just, did you see these previews? Oh, with the dad? Yeah. Is dad going to be okay with it? Is John Rail going to be okay with it? Dad looks like he is not okay in general. Like I would, I would not. He just lost his wife. Correct, but I don't, he doesn't look well either. I would not let my dad behind. I would not leave no, my dad that's what behind. I'm saying. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like he looks like Take he's an family. older man. He doesn't look like he can rock and roll on his own. No. No. All right. We'll see. That's the episode. What an episode. What an episode. If you want even more content and coverage, Join us on the Patreon. Join us on Supercast. We're talking about it the other way. And that's a wild season. So patreon.com slash married to reality or married to reality.supercast.com. The other way, that starts at the Cousins Club for audio only. Also, if you want video of us doing it, that's the family affair. You also get a monthly bonus. Yes. And tis the season where we just start peppering the Patreon and Supercast with bonuses. We may or may not be doing that, <laughs> but if you've been a patron for the past year or so, you know that when we say we're going to do something, we may or may not do it. <laughs> so join us Very over true. there. Join us over there. Make sure you're following us on Instagram at Married to Reality Pod. You can message us there, call in, share your thoughts, share 90 Day by the Ways for me. Help me out because Teresa doesn't. Please, but yeah, please help. <laughs> so that's at Married to Reality Pod on Instagram. Also, make sure you're following the podcast wherever you're listening right now. You listening on Apple? Give us a follow. You listening on Spotify? Follow along. It's so easy to do. All you have to do is look down and smash that follow button. Guys, smash it like it's as hot as the beautiful review we got from our friend Rach. Rach twenty thirty for president. <laughs> you got my vote. What a beautiful review. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. If you haven't left the review, please do. You don't have to run for president to do it. You just got to leave a review. Yeah, we so, we'll love it. It's so easy. We love it so much. So thank you, Rachel. Thank you for everyone who's left a review. And yeah, if you haven't left one, if you leave a five-star review and you write something, we'll read it on this podcast right here. Yes. All right. <laughs> that is that. I've said it all. Have you said it all? I've said it all. You sure have. It means we'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.